Hello, and thanks for checking out ChartGuys.com. We're proud to be one of the most successful technical analysis communities online, teaching you the skills to become a more confident, effective, and informed trader. Join our community of hundreds of analysts worldwide working together to learn the charts, generate profit, and achieve financial independence. For access to daily live chart analysis and market coverage, a thriving chat community, along with dozens of hours of exclusive educational materials. We look forward to seeing you. Let's check out some charts. Hey traders, checking in on the broader market. So we have a complete recovery from the bulls where we close at the low of the day yesterday on the bearish news reaction about the vaccine needing more data and yada yada. So that quickly gave us a daily support level now on SPY at 291.95, heading to higher highs, the highest prices of the entire COVID bounce in regular trading hours. Bears are still clinging to one little hope here that we can reject from this resistance we're looking at the futures chart to 2980, 90, and we hit 2980, 20 today. So we're not hitting a higher high quite yet on the futures chart. It's a 12 hour bull flag that is trying to confirm. And again, I cannot stress enough, and I've only been doing this since the COVID dump where futures trading has mattered so much more to the day to day action than it used to three months ago. But the 12 hour time frame has kept perspective for me, the four hour and the 12 hour on the after hours trading, I should say the futures trading has given me a lot of insight and has kept bigger picture perspective intact very well. So the question is, can we get a bull break overnight tonight to confirm this 12 hour bull flag or is it going to be a 12 hour double top? And if we do double top and pull back, the bears have a lot of proving to do in the short term, but if they do, then 29.13 is then the most important level to lose the 12 hour uptrend, which would align with the SPY low of extended hours, which was down at 291.29. So we'll see. Uh, but other than that, we're looking at S&P 500 3000, SPY 300 psychological. Again, as I've said over the past week, we're watching QQQ, Microsoft, Amazon, Apple, and these major tech names and their daily uptrends. Because we know if the tech names keep their daily uptrends, the market bulls keep their control. Facebook and Amazon ripping to all-time highs today. I said this during the live stream. A market bull's best friend is big tech names in blue sky breakout. IWM, higher highs. The only resistance is the high of the entire bounce, 136.85. New little short-term support level, the low of yesterday, 130.06. So still one resistance level there on IWM. QQQ, no resistance in terms of the highs of the bounce. We're at the high right now. Next level that we're looking at is up at 230. Let's see, there's a gap at 229 that filled. So 234.01. QQQ's all-time high is less than 3% away, which is astounding. And on QQQ, anything above, 216 is a daily higher low. We now have $15 of space to work with to maintain the daily uptrend. QQQ over the next two days could pull back 5% and still be in a daily uptrend. XLV did not participate in the strength today. So we can look at that two ways. We can say, well, all that does is set up for QQQ to take a breather and XLV bulls to show up to keep this market strong. Or we can look at that and say, if we see a loss of the daily uptrend, that's going to be the first crack in the bull's armor. Still a ways away, 97.57. Anything above that is a daily higher low, but not necessarily strong the last two days in the healthcare sector. And always watching that rotation, always watching what each individual sector is doing out of XLV, XLF, and QQQ, because as long as one of them is looking strong, Again, if we're going to see notable market weakness, all of these sectors need to be going down at the same time. So when they are playing tag team action, XLF and QQQ, tech and financials looking strong and healthcare takes a breather, then maybe we see tech take a breather tomorrow and healthcare and financials go up. As long as that rotation is going on, the market remains healthy overall. Have to see weakness out of everybody. So we're watching for a daily higher low on XLV. XLF. Short-term support established at 2158. We have to break 2230 and 2232 for a clear bull break on this current daily setup. So that's a key resistance to be watching. 
XBI is trying to set a daily higher low. Anything above 97.18. Daily inside bar today. Still very strong overall. SMH, bearish reversal candle yesterday. Blowing that out of the water to the high of the COVID bounce. Gap to fill. Next level is 144.96. We have NVDA recently hitting a blue sky breakout. So chips certainly keeping control. And again, just like QQQ, tons of space. Anything above 127.41 is a daily high or low. We almost have 10% of space to work with before we would lose the daily uptrend from here. The VIX. So the VIX has not broken the pattern of a lower high each day. And this is an example where the leveraged ETFs did. So a little bit of a fake out. We saw a higher low set on the daily on TVIX at 148.68. The bounce started. Obviously that bounce has no follow through. We are still holding that low. 148.68, we held 148.81. But if 148.68 breaks, bears back in full control and looking at the low of the whole pullback. Gold. So gold bull is still holding on. Again, I'm watching for a 12 hour higher low to be the more likely scenario. So high of 17.65, low of 17.26. Anything under 1765 is a lower high and there's potential for this 12 hour tightening range to tighten up into the end of this week. Silver is a little bit stronger, but it is still slowing a little bit. Again, still higher highs, still no red flags, but these bull breaks aren't getting a ton of follow through. So bears are going to be watching and trying to say that this is a rising wedge. Maybe it is, but not seeing nearly enough weakness to be looking bearish on silver at the moment, but... Bears are going to be watching something along these lines. That's a good one. Nice clear pattern. But as far as the four-hour uptrend is concerned, as long as we form higher lows, the bulls keep control. So anything above 1727 keeps the bulls in full control on this four-hour chart. Bull miners double top for GDX at the high of yesterday to the penny. If we see a bear break of 3645 tomorrow, daily consolidation is underway. And we'll see, can the bulls form a daily higher low compared to 33.42? And as far as the junior miners are concerned, that upper wick did not happen. The high of the day was, I believe, 46, no, 48.80 or something along those lines. High of the day, 48.80. That upper wick did not happen. And whenever I want to see if an upper wick is fake or not, zoom in. A one minute time frame shows us that it is not real. First candle of the day, volume tells us if it's real or not. On that volume, did we see a move up to 50 and then all the way back? No, it's not a real wick. I'm keeping an eye on the bare miners. Let's look at dust for a second. Look at the four hour time frame for dust tightening up. So something to keep an eye on the next couple of days. We would have to see silver confirm a rising wedge and we would have to see gold set a 12 hour lower high. But we've got on these bear miners, low, high, higher, low. I would like to see a lower high compared to 2766, one more higher low, and then a bull break. If that were to happen, it would probably be some point on Friday. So just a trade that I keep an eye on. Odds that I take this trade, maybe 10%. But if it aligns to a really nice risk to reward scenario that I like, then I've got it on the back burner and I can bring it into play if it gets those ideal conditions. Oil, high or low every single day on US oil for the last nine plus days. So we're watching that pattern. We're at the high of the entire move. Look at the July futures contract because there's a key resistance approaching 35.18. It's all about that level for the next couple of days. If we lose the pattern of a higher low every day without breaking 35.18, It'll be a rejection from resistance. Tons of space for a daily higher low to form. Bulls are keeping complete control. But again, anytime you see a pattern of a higher low every single day and you start heading towards double digit days where that's happening, you know to be watching for even just healthy consolidation. Natural gas, daily lower high is set because we lost the four hour uptrend. And if the bulls are going to change this daily trend, we have to hold the low of 156, turn around and break resistance of 1763. That would be a daily trend change. But otherwise, it's just a daily lower high on that bounce. 
So we'll see if the SPY bulls are able to break resistance overnight tonight. If not, keeps the bears with some hope. So I appreciate you watching. Hope you're well, and we will see you tomorrow. So here's Mama Duck. And unfortunately, we're not going to have baby ducks this year, I don't think. The other day, she came walking to the pond, limping. She had a cut on her chin. And she recovered from the limp. She's better now, but pretty sure something either attacked them while they were walking to the pond after the babies hatched or attacked the nest while she was on it. And the two nights after she showed up, her and the males slept here for the first time and it was very cold, so if there were any eggs, they certainly wouldn't have made it. That's the way nature goes. They still have each other. Spirits are still up, but... No baby ducks. So this is Dottie. She's a old grandma, as you can see from her Nips laid a few litters in her day, fostering her for a couple weeks. She likes wrestling and throwing her weight around and cuddling. Pretty good girl. Fitting name. I've only ever known old women named Dottie. And she's kind of like an old grandma. So let's do a garden walkthrough. This is radishes that are sizing up, watermelon radish. I already picked a bunch of different variety that was early sooner and planted rhubarb in their spot. This is going to be asparagus, so I won't be able to harvest that and eat it for another year. Potatoes sizing up. These are potato flowers. That's a sunflower that's joining the fun, so we're going to let it go. Onions are flowering because the temperature fluctuations are confusing them. So I've been eating them as green onions because they're not going to bulb up and be good for storing as they normally would. Garlic doing its thing. Tomatillos. Some ground cherries. I think that is huckleberry but I'm not entirely sure. I'm not good at labeling things when I plant them. More potatoes, carrots. The beets are looking good. I cover them up in the middle of the hot day because they start to wilt faster than other stuff. Planted watermelon seeds here. They haven't sprouted yet. Chinese pink celery. Been putting a little bit of that in some soups as well, but otherwise, gonna let it size up. Peas are going good. They're just these smaller white flowers are just starting to produce their first sugar snap peas. And the bigger ones are just starting to put their flowers out, and they're pretty beautiful. So that's what these bigger flowers look like, but they haven't started putting any peas on yet. Brussels sprouts doing well. I picked a bunch of caterpillars off of there. Cabbage doing well. These are eggplant and forget what else. <laughs> but not doing great. They're just starting to take hold. I transplanted them and then we had a late frost. So they've been a bit stressed out from that. Turn this into a little flower bed. So these are all different kinds of flowers. Again, I have no idea what's what. One, two, three, four, eleven different kinds of flowers here. And then I planted some seeds of some zinnia and some coxcomb. This kale's on its way out from last year. It's starting to flower. So eventually I'll pull that up, but I already started putting some mint around here. This is some small sage, dill, basil. Two different kinds of basil, cilantro starting to take off, greens, tatsoi, 
charred kale collards all going very well excessive amounts now I'm pretty much eating salad every day and making a bunch of soup out of the other greens but need to start sharing soon if anybody wants any produce come on by and get it broccoli cauliflower cabbage and this is the lettuce that will need help finding a home a bunch of these heads can start going these have just been taking individual leaves and there's more So these big heads are ready to go. And then around the edges here, I planted some bush beans, green string beans, and then some climbing beans, which I'll climb up along this fence. And behind the collards over here, I planted cucumbers, none of which have started sprouting. I planted them a few days ago. And I'll climb the cucumbers up this fence. And with the help of Dana, we planted Probably about a hundred sunflower transplants all along the driveway and hoping this is going to be the coolest driveway I've ever lived at. Good girl. Big elderberry bush doing really well. And I was very baffled by all these onions and then I remembered I had a ton of extra onions that I planted all around it. So that'll be a nice bonus. Perennial flowers. Just starting to see some of them bloom. And I planted a bunch more flowers along the edges of these beds here. I was concerned the fig trees weren't going to make it, but they are putting out their growth. It's going to take a few years before I'll see any fruit from there. Raspberries. And the blueberries, seeing a good number of blueberries forming up. It's going to be a while before they're ready. Big blackberry bush starting to put all its flowers out. And I planted summer squash and winter squash in this lower bed. I'll run the winter squash vines down the hill. Tomatoes and peppers in their pots and starting to take hold. This is a big raspberry bush. Strawberries are doing okay. They're definitely getting eaten by something, whether it's turkeys or a groundhog. Probably a groundhog. I've started to see him around more. But you can see some of these plants not very happy as their leaves are being eaten. But I'm fine just winging it and seeing what survives. And if things don't survive here, I'll do something else next year. Pretty much the only thing left to plant is some okra and some corn that I'm just going to disperse randomly around the yard. And then all these extra tomatoes that are screaming to get out of their pots. I will put those just around the yard and see if they take hold and welcome any deer or whatever wants to eat them can eat them. A bunch of extra tomatillo plants that I just stuck in the ground here to see how they'll go. And that's the update for now. Got this beautiful rhododendron bush that I didn't see flower last year because I moved in after it. I noticed all the wild rhododendron around here, they flower very dispersed. They'll do a couple flowers at a time. So cool to see this giant 15 foot tall bush all flower in unison. just set out the morning bird feed for the birds and these turkeys are feasting on it. I guess they're birds. They meet the criteria. Little fuzzball nerd faces. So these are the ingredients of Dan's soup. We got some spinach, kale, chard, collards, some tot soy. And some green onion that flowered too soon, but you can still make some green onion soup out of it. Put it into bone broth. There you go. So I found three of these ducks at a regeneration store. 
and liked them and thought it'd be pretty cool to have an entire wall and flock of ducks. So I went online and saw that it was a company from the 60s and they're no longer making them and pretty much bought the entire supply of what was online on eBay and all that. So now I'm a, a collector of wooden ducks, but I think it looks pretty cool. And we'll see if that collection grows over the years.